complaining about that stuff, I'm like, well, let's do something about it. So, you know, for me, you know, I, I wrote this op-ed for NBC and, and it was, you know, it was about like me going to a racist audition and me walking out and, you know, in that article, uh, what was important for me was not just complaining. I was like, okay, well, what can I do? And like the solution I can think about is I need to create my own content, right? I need to create my own art, uh, you know, and not ask for permission. So in that article, I said, yeah, you know what? I'm going to make this film. It's going to be called Gook. It's going to be about the LA riots. And, and um, that's, that's my contract with you guys that are reading this. So uh, I was on the line. So I wrote this op-ed talking about this race audition, but it wasn't just complaining. I was like, this is my plan. This is what I'm going to do. And that's what I did. That's, I fulfilled my promise. But I feel the faster way to change things are not from the top down, it's from the bottom up. So I feel like, you know, grassroots from the community, supporting our own artists, uh, you know, authored by our own, our own voices is a much more effective way than waiting for a huge corporation to change. It just takes way too long. I'm gonna let you guys ask questions in two seconds, but I want him to explain the name of the movie because you guys are, a lot of you are too young to know what this word means, uh, and a lot of you are too young to even know the LA riots. So I want him to touch bases a little bit of that, and then we'll open up to you guys to ask questions for him. So um, I'll start with with the the riots um, because we have a bunch of high school kids here today, and uh, um, I don't I, you guys I don't know were you guys born before or after 1992? Okay, so after. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, the riots happened because, uh, you know, there's this incident, Rodney King, uh, he was an African-American man, he was beat by four police officers, it was caught on tape, and there was a trial for a year. Uh, and basically, uh, they did the trial in Simi Valley, it wasn't like in, uh, you know, court, it was just like a not a very fair trial, right? And all four officers were acqu acquitted, no jail time, no, no punishment. And if you watch this video, it's very violent. They're, they are like beating him with their nightsticks for a long time. And because uh, of that verdict of not guilty, um, that was the start of, of the riots. And another uh, fact at that time, it was also happening at the same time, there was a court case with a, a, a Korean shop owner, um, a Korean merchant, uh, and her name was Soon Jadu. And she shot uh, this African American lady, uh, actually a girl, a 16 year old girl in the back of the head and killed her. So, you know, um, there was a lot of racial tension. So when the riots broke out and it was first about the Rodney King thing, then, you know, you know, once they started lighting stuff up on, uh, up in flames, uh, their next target was like, okay, there's, you know, there's such, so much racial tension that Korean businesses went up in flames as well. But not only Korean businesses, also African-American businesses, like it just the whole neighborhood just went up in flames. So that's a little bit of background about the LA Rice, which is the backdrop of this film. Um, in terms of the name of, you know, Gook, um, in the Korean language, Gook means country. It also means soup. <laughs> but it means country, you know? So, you know, when the GIs came to the Korean War, uh, you know, during the early 50s, you know, the GIs would come in and they would say, Miguk, Miguk Saram, right? And um, that means America, right? American person or America. Um, that directly translated, Miguk means beautiful country. And they took half of that word and they made it into a racial slur. And then they, that carried all over to the Vietnam War. And, uh, you know, it was a derogatory term that's still used to this day. Um, What's crazy is a lot of you know younger kids they don't even know what that word means, and that's not okay, because we can't. The the reason being is we can't erase we can't let that happen we can't erase history that's part of history and we need that education to happen because you know as we live in this country and 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 you know over the generations we these these things need to constantly be. Uh, taught to our kids because, you know, 
these these things, hateful terms will come up and people need to know that that's not an okay thing to say. I've gotten hate, I, I've gotten a lot of like heat for, for, the, for the title of this film, but if you notice, the first thing I do in the film, I give you the definition. So you know what that word means. And in a pivotal moment of the film, when, when Camilla asks, what does that word even mean? Uh, he, Eli has a choice. He either has the choice to perpetuate the cycle of hate, um, because I feel hate is learned. It's a learned thing. Or he can shelter her for the time being and, and um, teach her the literal definition and, and shield her for the time being. And he decides to do the latter, right? He decides to, to, to protect her and, and not tell her. And that's an act of choice he makes in the film. And, um, you know, right there, like we're teaching people like what, where that word comes from and what that word means. So, of course, it, the, the title needs to be goof. Um, but now everybody in this room knows where that word comes from, and it's important. So now we'll open up to you guys if you guys have any questions for Justin. By the way, he's a local kid. He's a uni grad. <laughs> way back there. Uh, hi, my name is Adam, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I just want to say thank you for making this film, and thank you for coming to our theater. I think it's, it's my second time seeing it, and it's truly an achievement. Oh, thank you. Um, you spoke about the genesis of the idea and making your own content and choosing this as the content. Uh, stepping into the director's chair, was there any evolution to uh, your relationship to that original idea and any profound discoveries? So, um, you know, our family had a business in Paramount and uh, we were affected by the rights. Um, and, over, you know, I've been an actor for 16 years and over the years, I have auditioned for, for uh, L.A. Wright's films. Even Spike Lee was trying to make one with Universal. It's always such a black and white issue. And I've always thought, like, well, you know, Koreans lost out the most financially besides the city of Los Angeles. Also, you know, another thing is, afterwards, you know, there's this thing with, with uh, you know, labeling Asians as the model minority. We're oftentimes used as a wedge between other minorities. And we use it so like when it's convenient for them, they go, oh, well, look at look at the Asian people. They're doing so great. What, what's wrong? But then when it's not convenient, you know, for the LA riots, the city of Los, Los Angeles tried to blame Koreans for the riots. Um, so, you know, I felt like there's other films that were going to be made about the subject, especially this year. There's another film. Um, and, you know, I got a hold of the script and I was like, OK, wow the Korean perspective is not present. It's not properly represented. It's not authentically told. Having personal experience with this, this event, if I don't tell the story, we're not gonna be at the table for the conversation. And um, that's a huge, uh, you know, opportunity lost to, to be a part of this conversation. You know, and it, as you all know, like what's going on in the country right now, we need to have these talks. And it needs to be upfront and head on. So um, that was the, my drive to make the film. I guess stepping into the director's chair from, you know, crossing over from being an actor. Um, you know, I always wanted to be like the Asian Sean Penn, right? <laughs> I went to drama. You know, I, I got proper acting training and all that stuff. But get, coming out of school is in my early twenties. Forget about. It. There's not a single role for me out there. How I got into the industry was cut through comedy. And you know, like I, I've done really well. But there comes a point where I'm just like, okay, if I don't make the role myself, it just won't come. So that was, you know, originally I didn't want to act in this and I, I wrote it for somebody else, but but I want to create roles that I want to see on screen. So it's uh So I really honor you for making that film and thanks and Thank I think you. it's
going to really open people's eyes and it's very good for the young people. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hi, Justin. Thanks for coming. Um, can you talk about your writing process, um, the, screen, like the screenwriting process and how that went through? And you had a lot of great lines and it was very humorous too. Did you do a lot of improvisation, improvisation in it or was there a lot of script that you did or working with uh, others? Yeah, believe it or not, uh, it's pretty to the script. I mean, you know, there's things change. I'm not a stickler for, for you know, too much for the words, but, uh, you know, the basic intentions are all, we're all scripted. Uh, but we rehearsed for, like, close to two months. So by the time we, because we had a minor and there's child labor laws, so by the time we show up and said, we're, we, we got to fly because she can only work five hours a day um, on the, in the summer, she, at nighttime, she can only work till 11.30, and the sun goes down at 8.30. So for, for all my night shoots, I had three hours. I was lucky because I had met Congressman Ted Lu, and he told me if I ever needed anything, he gave me his card, his personal number, and he said, let me know. Um, and I, you know, I was talking to Kate here, and she's like, call him, call him. And I was like, but he's a congressman. She's like, no, that's what he's there for. So I, ca I called him, and I was like, congressman, Lou, like I, you know, I need some help, and and um, he just made one phone call and got me an extra like hour and a half a day, two hours. But um, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for yeah, so for the writing process, um, it was uh, I outlined for two months. Um. I uh, wrote the first draft in three, and then over the course while we we're raising money, I, I did about like eight, seven or eight rewrites. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't improvised. Um, and in terms of process, I usually I note card uh, structurally, but for this, I um, I did what's called a vomit draft. That's like a almost like a stream of thought script first, and then I started to go back and restructure stuff, and and um, yeah. But you know, as you as you saw in the film, like I'm playing with a lot of different sort of themes and trying to layer all that stuff in. You know, it takes a bit of time. Thank you. Do you, do you have a question too? Oh, I did. Um, well, I had a random question, then uh, more serious question. Um, the random question is: Is Eli trilingual? Is he for when he's speaking to Juan? Like, does he speak Spanish, or what was the? Uh, I think he understands. Because, um, or was he just picking up on the English? No, I think he understands like basic Spanish. It's like a very specific question, but it's yeah. I mean, yeah, no, absolutely. He 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 understands Spanish, and obviously he can speak Korean. You saw him speak Korean at like the most opportune time. Um, uh, so yeah, I would say he's like maybe dual and a half. <laughs> What's your second question? The second question, um, well, I wanted to thank you for giving the perspective, like the Korean perspective. I had no idea about it. I was wondering if you could elaborate on how Koreans were blamed for the LA riots. Well, because of the racial tension. And, and um, you know, we were, it's, this is such a long sort of big, big topic we can talk about for a long time. But, um, we were we were in their neighborhoods and we didn't exactly assimilate um so you know there was a lot of uh cultural misunderstanding like for example right when a korean person hands you your change they don't hand it in your hand because that's rude they put it on the table and push it to you but in american culture you're like oh you don't want to touch me like what's going on here you know, also, it's, it's disrespectful to talk to somebody in the eyes. It's like, are you, are you trying to engage me in like, uh, you know, adversarially? Um, so, you know, there's these cultural differences and we were in their neighborhoods and it's, you know, they saw us as like, you know, we were making money and, and in their neighbors and leaving. You know, um, David So in this film, the guy who plays Daniel, his parents own a black beauty supply in, in, uh, in Sacramento. And um, he's like answering questions for me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he always said that like, he was always confused why they were so angry, but like as an adult, he understood like, it's systemic, you know? Um, they were giving us the loans that they weren't allowing them to have, and we're going in their neighborhoods and opening up businesses. So there's this just, 
you know, like I said, we are often used as like a wedge and, you know, there's like these double standards and, and uh, it just creates a lot of animosity. So when this whole thing happened, we were the scapegoat. It was like easy because they needed an out, you know? And, and you know, if you know anything about the riots, what they did is they set up a perimeter. So the riots wouldn't spread to like Beverly Hills, they wouldn't set, spread to the Palisades, and they just let it burn. You know, uh, they just, it was like hell on earth and anyone inside of there, you know, a lot of people died. Um, so it was, they, yeah, they're also protecting their stores. So it was just like all you saw on the news were Korean people on, on the roofs with guns. So the first thing, you know, the LA, you know, city of Los Angeles is like, you know, they try to blame the Koreans. You know, actually, you guys had a place right next to USC. So I, you know, actually, I'm a little bit older than, than Justin. So I actually had a store there, and when the riots began, um, they were just destroying everything. So we lost actually a restaurant. I don't know. My kids and young and embarrassing, but I own Wahoo's, and uh, I, we lost our uh, our store up there. And the beginning of the riots was about black and white, but it ended with yellow and black because it was it was a it was a war zone. They were shoot we were shooting each other just to protect ourselves, but. Me, I'm a, you know, I left. I decided to come back to Orange County, but it was pretty scary. So that's why it became too easy to blame the Koreans because they're on the rooftop with with shotguns, and and you can see that on live TV. So it was much easier. It goes, oh, that's how this. So it began on a different note and ended completely different, and it took a while to fix that. Uh, a long time. money <laughs> you can't get you know it's just impossible to uh, raise money for a film like this it's just uh, you know diverse uh, voice driven films like they just don't think it's bankable that's why you know to applaud you guys that's why it's so important that you guys show up for this stuff because if you don't it gives Hollywood a reason not to finance these films they say oh yeah look uh, you know, and we could talk about this forever, but like, you know, it's it's also systemic because look at Chris Hemsworth. How many bombs has he had? But they they continue. It, he he's cultivated, right? He's made into a star. So they say, oh no no, it was this or that. You know, if they gave a, a an Asian American a shot at a lead role like that, if it failed, there's no second chance. You know, so like it's. You know, this film isn't just about me anymore. It's like, you know, we went to Sundance and the uh, we got the audience award, right? And the uh, the audience voted for this, not the jury. So obviously there's an appetite for it and people enjoy it and understand it. But you know, when people don't show up, you know, the executives are like, yeah, see? So that is the hardest thing to get these films made. And you know, it'll slowly, ch you know, hopefully it'll slowly change, but like, we got to support our own voices that are, you know, uh, you know, the voices that are from our own community that are telling these stories, rather than, rather than like, you know, I don't know. And you know, also like when I asked my own, you know, I asked a lot of tech people that have hundreds of millions of dollars to help me, and they even said, hey, when you make your next movie, let us know, because we'll help you. When I get when I call them, they scatter like cockroaches. <laughs> you know, because they don't think it's their problem. They're like, well, yeah, some maybe somebody else will pick up the slack, but it, they won't. You know, and that's why you know, like, this these type of things are, are important because uh, if you, you know, another thing is like, um, as Asian Americans, I think a lot of us identify. Well, 